this particular film is unique in, in that the short story that it's derived from has specific references in it all the way through of the kind of lighting that exists. And as the director of photography, my challenge then became doing that in a way that still made it photographable and still made it have some kind of a visual impact that, that was consistent with, uh, with the story itself. Light comes in different colors, from the warm color of candle or firelight to the cool color of the noon sun. The director of photography will naturally consider these color temperatures when he begins lighting the action. Okay, we're ready over here. We close the first. Am I? In the spring of 1990, I worked as a sound man with a small film crew making an adaptation of John Steinbeck's short story, The Raid. That's me labeling the tape box. The director of photography, or DP as he is known in filmmaker shorthand, is the crew member who is responsible for making the pictures. Sound men have a front row seat to the filmmaking process, and over the years, I've had the opportunity to observe the director of photography at work. Now, the very first thing that you do when you arrive at a location is to decide where the action is going to take place, and then you establish the camera position. Everything else revolves around that. In this case, we're having to imagine where the lights are going to be because we're setting up during the day, and we're going to actually be shooting it at night. The lighting is actually described by John Steinbeck as being from blue arc lights and we used uh, some fairly small units called HMIs that are very bright and we really just used two lights in this whole scene with just a little bit of fill from the practical street light that we hung over the actors. The gaffer discusses with the director of photography the exact positioning of the backlight and the key light. Backlight separates people from the background. You get kind of a halo around them for separation. It also creates a more dramatic, contrasty look. Key light is the main light that, is, that illuminates the actor. I believe that there should be a logic to where the light's coming from. I use a key light that's legitimized by an actual source in the scene, whether it's a lantern or where it's, whether it's a street light or, or whatever, a, a car headlight. The key light seems to be coming from that light source. One of the most difficult things about shooting at night is getting an exposure that looks like you want it to look. I'm going to stop under here, Eric. From the beginning, I, I had conceived of this film as being yeah. very contrasty and being very uh, dark. By using backlight, you can get an exposure, you can get a, a brightness on the rim, but keep the front dark so that you still have the impression of darkness, but you still have bright highlights. I aim the, ex the incident exposure meter, which is an exposure meter that collects the light into a, a, a little sphere. And I aim that sphere directly at the light and get an exposure from that. Then I turn the sphere around and aim it toward the camera, which means that it's aiming away from the light. And that's, okay, th that's the dark side of the, of the actor. And, and then I, I average, again, depending on experience, that exposure to create a look that looks dark and looks realistic for a night scene. I hate scenes that are photographed at night that are overly bright. Oh, by the way, I should add at this point that on this particular project, the director of photography also happens to be the director of the film. Roll sound. Speed. Roll camera. Mark it. Me too. Take five. Okay, start the car. Action. It's awful dark. Wonder if the moon will come out later. It usually does when it's so dark. You gonna make the first speech, Dick? Nah. You make it. I had more experience than you. I watch them while you talk, and then I can smack them where I know they bite. You know what you're gonna say? Sure I do. I got it on my head, every word. Wrote it out and learned it. The 
The interior night scenes were shot on a soundstage on a set that was built to represent an old abandoned storefront. All these scenes, by the way, were shot in the daytime. I thought you said there's plenty of oil. This one's dry. What I decided to do in lighting this series of scenes that take place in this set was to start off with the set being lit fairly dark. In fact, I think we only had two or three lights on at the very first. And as we progress through the scenes toward the end of the action that takes place at this location, uh, the light got progressively lighter, similar to what happens when you walk into a dark room and your eyes adjust to the light. Time's it now, Dick. Quarter past nine. In this case, the director of photography used blue gels on the 2,000-watt lights called Juniors outside the store to match the blue street lights established earlier in the film. Inside, amber gels were used on several 1,000-watt babies to represent the type of lights that would come from a kerosene lantern with an old smoky globe. We have the, the lantern sitting on an apple box in the middle of the room, which is described in the story. The main key light throughout the whole film seems to come from that one source of the oil lamp in the center of the room. Uh, I usually use fill as just kind of a general fill in a room to, to, to bring up the light level a little bit, but after it's photographed, it doesn't really even look like there's a fill light there because I keep the exposure down so that the, um, the dominant source light uh, seems to be the only illumination. Party coming. Okay, and action. Oh, come on, get your stuff together and get out of here. That party's on the way. Thanks. Thanks for telling us. You run along, we'll be all right. Well, ain't you guys coming? Look, I'm gonna some of your stuff. Basically, there's one key light in this scene lighting three actors, and all three of them are being lit differently. One of them is being backlit, one of them is being side lit, and one of them is being front lit. You've got to take it. Let me just stay with you. If you look at the paintings of the Dutch masters, and you'll see that people are very often lit by sunlight pouring through windows. I think window light is the nicest form of light that there is. In a case where you're filming a long scene, as we were doing in the hospital, we, we were in that location for six hours. You can't depend on the sun to be in the one place for six hours, so you have to provide a source of light. In this case, we used um, kind of a wor workhorse light called a nine light, which is, which is nine little uh, daylight balanced headlights that are mounted together in one fixture, and you turn them all on, and you get a fairly bright although not very direct source of light. It, it doesn't throw a real sharp shadow because there, you have nine different lights, so you basically you're creating nine different little shadows when you use a light like that. So it tends to be a softer kind of light, more of a diffuse kind of light, similar to uh, sun coming through a misty uh, slight overcast or through clouds or through trees, which in this case is, is what we were simulating. One of the things that I've come to realize is that the director of photography not only lights to make an attractive picture, but also to evoke an emotional response in the viewer. This scene in the hospital was, photo was supposed to be lit by daylight, so we wanted the light to be very blue. I should also add that when we photographed the scene, we photographed it without the color correction filter on the camera in order to make it look even bluer. Normally, you would use what's called an 85 filter on the camera to get normal flesh tones when you're photographing with daylight. Uh, we chose to not use the 85 filter and to let the scene go a little bit blue so that it has a colder, uh, more institutional kind of uh, feeling that a hospital should have. And then turn back to him very slowly so that your face will turn into the light. And then finish the line. Or should we get and, <laughs> and instead of looking at the light, just sort of enjoy feeling it. Just a you know, warm sun on your face. It's the first time you've noticed that there's a warm, that there's sun out there and it's and it's hitting you full on the face. Okay, this is the magic time. This is where everything comes together. The director and the gaffer have set the lighting just right. They rehearse the actors. The dolly crew is all set to go. The boom operator knows where to put the mic. Okay, I gotta go to work. Roll 
speed. Scene 30, take 5. Action. You remember the Bible did? Light seemed to be a very important part of the story to Steinbeck, and therefore it became a very important part of the story to me as a director and as a director of photography. And that's why in the end of the raid, when the character Root delivers his last line, I had him actually look out the window up to the sun, up to the light that was coming through the, through the window, because it kind of rounded out the continuity of the lighting theme of the story. It was just I felt like saying that. It was just kind of the way I felt. <laughs>